Amanda, Amanda, Amanda. Welcome home. How long are you staying? Don't know yet. I'm still figuring it all out. Well, darling, we all hope you're here for good. <laughs> and not for evil. <laughs> she's one of Broadway's favorite leading ladies, and now she's back on TV as a good Christian belle in the new ABC series, GCB. Please welcome Kristen Chenoweth. Hi. Hi, honey. GCB. Yeah. I have to tell you, first of all, I see you constantly <laughs> because I get on the subway in the morning and the entire subway car is Kristen Chenoweth and the GCB ads. I get off the subway, there's a billboard across the street. I saw it. I go to lunch, there's a billboard. I mean, I, I'm seeing you. I went to LA, you're on every billboard in LA. I mean, you're everywhere in this adorable little choir outfit. I know, it's a in the ads. short. Oh, yeah, sexy. Thank you. So, I mean, do you feel like you've, this is like the biggest Cheno campaign ever? I mean, you're everywhere. Well, you know, it's one of those double-edged swords where you're like, oh my gosh, you know, you get to, like, you worked so hard and long, and you see that, and you go, okay, that's kind of cool. But then, it's also not my show. It's an ensemble show, so I'm like, that kind of brings out mixed emotions. And then there are the people that say, oh, they put your head on a different body. Oh. I'm like, those are my legs, people. I might not have a torso, but those are my legs. But um, That yeah. is completely you. Yeah, yeah. Of course it's yeah. you. I, it's, I, it's really cool, but yeah, I hope people don't get too sick of me. You're, you're the face of GCB. You're the official GCB, I guess. Yeah. A good Christian bell. Now, this this is a show. At one point, it was called Good Christian Bitches because mm -hmm. that was the name of a book, right? Thank you for being educated. Yes, <laughs> a lot of people aren't. Well, it went from Good Christian Bitches to Good Christian Bells to GCB. Right. So we're down with GCB. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. Exactly. So when you got this script uh, for Good Christian Bitches. Tell me about it. You cracked it open and what happened? Well, I was in Nashville recording Some Lessons Learned and um, last year and I was sort of um, beholden to Fox on another uh, okay. TV deal and sort of waiting for that script to come in. And I, So the date came and the script wasn't done and so I became available and I knew about the script because Bobby Harling and Darren Starr had already called my agent. but. I was a little nervous about the title, I'm not going to lie, because I am a Christian. I hope I'm not a bitch. I'm sure I have my bitchy moments, but I was nervous about that, uh -huh. those two words being together. But I read it, and I realized it, it was really not even about the title. It was about women yeah. and just the good and the bad and the ugly. And it made me laugh so hard. And this is how I knew that I was not going to, whenever I need to take a part, this is how I know I have to have it when I don't want anyone else to play that role. Then I go, that's my part. So the Fox deal ended and like the next day I had a meeting on the phone. I was in Nashville, you know, trying to wrap it up and Bobby and Darren told me where they saw her going because I didn't want it to be just one note. And um, I, I enjoyed what I heard and the rest is history. Do you think you've gotten good at sort of cracking open a script and knowing if, if something's gonna work? I mean, you've, you've been in LA for a while now, you get scripts and do you, you, you know, have that instinct? You know, I have the instinct of what I think is good. Uh -huh. And it might not be what's a commercial success. Like you look at Pushing Daisies and certainly it ha has its cult following. And, and I, you got an Emmy Award, <laughs> which isn't bad. It didn't suck. It was great. <laughs> but I didn't know, to be honest. I thought it's so different and unique yeah. and special. I didn't know how, if Middle America would do, you know, buy it or not, but I didn't care because okay. I wanted it. And that's the way I felt, feel about GCB too. I think it's funny. I think it's really funny. I mean, it's chocolate cake. It's just funny. It's, it's not even a dramedy, it's comedy. Right. It's on ABC and Desperate Housewives is wrapping up. So do you think it's sort of a, is it similar? Is it sort of for that audience? Do you think? I think, you know, there's been some comparison, but it's funny when people see our pilot, they're like, it's not really like Desperate Housewives at all. Yeah. It's, I mean, I love Mark Cherry and what he did with that world. But yeah, I think we could feasibly fit into that right. slot, that time slot. Well, all those people should come watch it at least. Please, <laughs> at least give it a I'll try. Start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it premieres this Sunday. Mm -hmm. So wh what, is, what do you do on premiere night? Are you going to be gathered around the TV? I know you've seen it before, but are you, do you watch it? Do you have like a party? What do you do? Usually I don't watch myself because I become crazy and <laughs> end up in a padded cell in a straight jacket <laughs> because I judge myself so harshly. But this time I've decided... Um, Leslie Bibb, who plays the lead, um, Amanda, she's going to be in New York. And I think Bobby Harling might be in New York. So we've decided we're going to get together. We'll probably have a glass of champagne and, and enjoy it. Nice. You know, it's nice to be able to, well, no matter what happens with it, 
and this is the way I look at my career and anything I take on now. You want it to go on and be successful, of course. But no matter what happens, you have to celebrate the work you did. So many times in my 30s, I was like, just keep going, keep going, and right. not stopping to enjoy it. Right. And I am doing that more. I turned 40, and it's like, not only did I, I still care about what people think of me, but I, I give less a shit. And now I, I just try to enjoy life. It's so short. You always seem happy. You always seem happy now. You always seem like, like good. you're you're in a good place. I get that from you. I am. I'm in a really good place, and you know, I think it's so funny. People are always like, "When are you gonna get married?" When are you? Gonna? Right. But I, I do want that, obviously. But I don't feel incomplete. I I feel so happy, and I love the projects I do. I love music. Obviously, you know how much I yeah. love to sing, and do concert work. So I'm fulfilled and. I'm saving my money so that if it all ends tomorrow, I can still keep my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about what GCB is. Okay. So uh, you mentioned Leslie Bibb. She plays Amanda, right? Yeah. So she's a girl who grew up in Dallas, left, and she's forced to come back like 20 years later. Yes. Let's say 15. <laughs> okay, don't push it, Paul. And she she was a, a mean girl. She's a mean and girl. And you were a, a little... Uh, can we say ugly duckling? Yes. Who turns into a swan? I mean, I think she might have had some work done, but yeah. It says it right here. She was, it was an assisted transformation. <laughs> assisted transformation. Of course, Kristen Chenoweth <laughs> has had no assistance. But yeah, she was uh, bullied by this. So she girl. was bullied by this girl. This is a very, it gets better. This is a very timely topic, bullying, right. right? And now you're gorgeous and you're going to take her down. Yeah, she isn't, but, but. But with the love of God behind but her. But with the love of God. So she might be considered a little bit of the villain, my part, Carlene. But, but I do think, as they used to say about Elphaba, she's just misunderstood. <laughs> I think that Carlene is, who doesn't remember being bullied and by who? Right. I do. Yeah. Who bullied you? A girl in my high school who was a basketball player and she said, I just want to punch you out because you're happy. I was like, I'm not even worth the punch. But the best is when she comes to my book signing years later with her kids. Right. You know, I still remember that. Yeah. And Carlene still remembers the pain that Amanda, Amanda wasn't nice. But she's changed and she's come back. Everybody change, people change. Yeah. Which is another lesson about the whole thing I like. Now you you keep uh, you're you're not saying your character's last name, which might be the best part of her name. What is what is this woman's full name? Cockburn, Carlene Cockburn. Um, thank you, Bobby Harling, for that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's all. Uh, Hilarious. Right. You, you mentioned uh, Robert Harling a few times. He's known to um, theater fans because he wrote Steel Magnolias. Is there anything is like better? one of the greatest plays. Did you, have you ever done Steel Magnolias in any form? No, um, but oh yeah, in high school I did a monologue. I did Which um, one? The, uh, the Sally Field monologue at the end when, oh yeah. You did the, I used to have the, the whole drama, thing. The, yeah, the, of course. The laughter at, and the tears. Like 17. What? But I've always wanted to do it. And do you want to do any of that monologue right now? I don't think I have the memory for it now. <laughs> remember, I'm old. I can't remember anything. But <clears throat> I've always loved him. And he was a big reason why I, because he, he writes women so well. Soap Dish is one of my favorites. Yes. He wrote that. I mean, First Wives Club, he knows how to write women. Yeah. And that's why <clears throat> people should get less, be less nervous about the religious aspect and more excited about just having fun with it. Yeah. Um, I think it would be awesome if you did like a one woman Steel Magnolias. Wouldn't that be fun? Like a benefit performance. Wouldn't that be amazing? Oh my gosh, you just, <laughs> now I'm not going to sleep tonight. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> it'd be insane, but, but it'd be a lot of fun. Can you imagine? <laughs> I would love it. I mean, Dolly Parton in the movie. Come on. It's classic. Oh. So, um, and you're also working with, I mean, this is a great, I mean, this is a great team of people, right? You're working with Dar Darren Starr. Amazing. Who created Sex and the City. Amazing. Are you, were you a big Sex and the City fan? Yes. Yes. Any uh, episodes jump out as being favorites? It's kind of dirty. <laughs> That's fine with me. It's the internet. <laughs> it is the internet. Well, you know what, I, what I, I always liked it when, oh gosh, you know what I'm not going to say, my fa favorite episode, I'm embarrassed, but I will say one thing that they did on that show that I liked, that Darren did, that was a part of that, was each woman was represented so well. So every woman in America could go, that's me. Yeah. Oh wait, no, that's me. And I think that's what he's done here, uh, helped guide so well. 
and of course, like I said, there's Bobby Harling who, who, you know, and they cast it so well. We have Miriam Shore, who's amazing. Who was in Hedwig and the Angry Anne show on Broadway. Love her. Yeah. I went to see her three times in the show because I could not believe that in was a Hedwig? woman. Hedwig? Because you didn't believe it was a woman? I just couldn't. I had to watch that moment. And I found myself watching the whole show, like watching her. Wow, you're a secret Hedwig fan. Yes, I saw it three Love times that. downtown. Um, Jennifer Aspen, who some people might know is from Glee and Party of Five, uh -huh. amazing. Of course, our beloved Annie Potts, who's a legend. Yeah. And, you know, when she walks on set, I'm just like, take my chair. I love her so much. I, I <laughs> you know, she was, I grew up with her. Yeah, um, designing women. Designing women. And then uh, Marisol Nichols, who's the single girl in the cast, like on the show, she's single and she's hilarious. And Leslie, and I'm really proud of it. I think, you know, Women who actually get along and play well nice together is always a relief. Yeah. That's nice. So you went and shot down in Dallas. Did you did you sort of um, soak in Dallas and see these women sort of walking around at the malls and the spas and the... You know, I grew up just down the road a piece, right. so I didn't really need to go to the mall. Broken arrow. Because I, I'm related to these women. Like, I know these women very well. This is not a world that is foreign to me. So, so you had these women in your church growing up and... Sure. I mean, there's always the woman that's like, oh, her outfit, bless her heart. There's always the woman that's married to the gay man. There's always a woman that has to outcook everyone. There's <laughs> always a woman who has to be the star in the choir. These are not church problems. These are people problems. Right, right. They're human, human, humanity. And that's what Bobby does so well, is he sheds light on the humor of the the humanity of Christianity. And I am a Christian, and I was very, very mindful of, oh wait, I don't want it to make fun of my religion. Yeah. But this show could happen in a temple, this show could happen anywhere. Yeah. Um, it just so happens it's in Dallas. Do you, do you feel like you're always sort of walking that line because people know that you're religious? And I remember there was that, years ago, there was all that drama when you were on the 700 Club, and, and then when you uh, defended Sean Hayes, uh, you, you know, you're very, uh, you're Pro gay icon. rights, gay uh -huh. rights supporter, and uh, what is how how do you deal with that now? Do you, do you is that part of turning forty? Just you can't really care that much. You just have to do your thing. You know what happened is when I was promote, I had a Christian album out. My second right. album was Inspirational right. Christian, and I only go on who I am and what I believe. I don't. I mean, the Bible is a guide, yeah. and I do believe the Bible in most parts. Right. And I've said this to you before. I think. My grandma would always say, oh, Chris, I read the Bible like I eat fish. I take the meat that serves me well, but I don't choke on a bone. And when I did the 700 Club, I, I, didn't, I didn't grow up watching that show, so I wasn't quite fully aware right. of what their right. beliefs were. Right. And again, not my pig, not my farm. I'm not going to judge people if they disagree with how I believe. But what it did was it really made me have to consider how I believe. And what I know about me is I've always believed in human, the basic right to love who you love, and the basic right to be who you are because God made you, I right. believe. Right. So God made me, I've said this many times, and it's the best example I use, I'm 4'11". If it was a sin to be 4'11", well, I could put on heels and do my hair, but at the end of the day when I go home, I'm still 4'11". Take off my shoes, take a shower, my hair's down, I'm 4'11". It's God makes people how they are, and I believe that the homosexual community is, he, he just doesn't make junk. So, Isn't it crazy seeing this, the, the Republican candidates, so, I mean, now it's really heating up, right? I mean, it must just drive you insane. Here's my problem, and I'm so not a political, I should never speak about politics because <laughs> I'm an idiot, but when it comes to that stuff, but here's what I know. I'm very conservative in a lot of ways. Yeah. I'm fiscally conservative. I like to give my money how I see fit, right. which I give a lot away, but that doesn't matter. The point is, I have a lot of conservative beliefs, but I can never vote that way until they right. say that gay people can be married. Right. The first Republican candidate that comes out and does that will make me happy, because I have a lot of conservative beliefs, but dang it, this is a civil rights issue. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. Of our day? Yeah. It's like, no more Rosa, Rosa Parks in the back of the bus. Right. I'm done. Right. I can't even believe we're still having that conversation. I'm done. And by the way, I just want to go on record too. 
with Obama, it's so easy to, to bash him. Mm. So easy to mm -hmm. bash the president, right? But how about having respect for the person in office, that he has to work with people who disagree with him every second. Right. Whether you voted for him or not, I'm so tired of people hearing, I've heard so many celebrities say, I'm moving to France. I'm moving to, you know what, you go ahead. <laughs> Good luck right. with that. In five seconds, you'll be back in America. So, see, that's my conservative side coming out. Right. I, I respect the person that, that, does our, that, that is our president, uh -huh. whoever that is. I might not always agree with them, but why do we have to bash the people? No, Santorum, he's not <laughs> helping himself. No, absolutely He's not, not helping himself. No, neither is Chris Christie. How about that guy? How about him? Then I liked him, and then I, what happened? Wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me move the soapbox. Get the soapbox out. I know, I'm sorry. No, it's all right. But see, all I have I'm to be glad. careful because I am not a political person, but, but I am on gay rights. I am Of course, and I'm sorry everybody loves you. Well, some people don't. That's all right. I don't know. They can, they I don't can, meet that many people that don't. Oh, there are. I, I can point you. I'll tell you later. <laughs> So uh, let's let's go back slightly. So the GCB is about this circle of friends, right? Yeah. What's what's your circle of friends like? Actually, I saw you at the um, the drama league. They recently toasted you, the big Kristen Chenoweth gala, <laughs> which was a lot of fun. Uh, I was like, it, am I dying? And no one's told me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Is my career over? <laughs> <I'm> kidding. <laughs> but it was so great to see uh, you with Anne L. Nathan and Aaron Dilly, who have who like I've been seeing you with forever. You have these like tight tight friends. Right? It's yes. very important to you, huh? It is. I've, I've stayed close friends with the friends I've had the longest. Yeah. Um, Denny Downs is one of my best friends, Aaron Dilly, and Nathan. Uh, I have a, a core of about eight people that mm -hmm. I know that are going to be there and then aren't going to, you know, that I just know they're my friends. It's, it is refreshing. I have one friend, Samantha, who's a trainer. Just a regular girl from Oklahoma, believe it or not, <laughs> that I didn't know before. Yeah, um, that's one of my best friends. That she doesn't, she don't care about the show business. Right. I like that. Right. How's the dating scene? What's going on? Anything to report? Quietly dating, having a good time, meeting some really great people, just quietly dating. And you know, one thing I've done is I've had diarrhea of the mouth a little bit with my love life, and I've it's realized. Time to zip it up. I think it might be. I'll never ask again. Never ask Until again. our next interview. <laughs> Just kidding. Now you're actually doing a little tour, right? So when does that start? It's, it starts May 8th. We kick it off. Um, you know, we announced it yesterday, so it starts in Seattle. And I think it's 22 cities across the United States. And then we will definitely add um, UK and Australia, but when, when there's not the Olympics going on. So probably okay. next fall and New Year's, I'll be doing those, the Europe. Are you excited? Beyond. I have to get myself in good shape. I'm going to be honest with you, I have been singing, but I'm not in the best physical uh -huh. cardio shape. And because I have backup dancers and I sing and dance in it, yeah, I so need what, to are, what are you doing? I mean, you have all kinds of, we know you for all kinds of different music, so what, what will the show be like? It'll be what people will want from me. Popular might be done in a very unique, different way. Fun, like a rap? P perhaps. <laughs> um, uh, it'll be certain songs I have to do because I will be killed if I do not. <laughs> and then songs, you know, original songs I've written, songs from some, some lessons learned um, that I've done that, that seem to speak to people. And opera, you know, it'll be everything. That's what makes my, my concert so hard because I have to really yeah. live like a nun. I do all of it so I have to rest and, you know, vix, mask, neck break. I mean, I, I look like a weirdo, but whatever it takes. That's exciting. It's exciting. I'm definitely, you're going to play New York? Yep. City Center. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. You've had a lot of successes at City Center, the encore shows. You know, it's funny, I, I was going to play the Beacon and um, through a series of circumstances, the Tonys needed to load in that week. The Tonys. My friends at the Tonys, <laughs> <laughs> they love me. They keep screwing you up. Um, <laughs> they needed me to move and so we we needed to work that out, so we did. And when I asked where to go, I said, you know where I want to go? City Center. That's where I feel so home. I feel so at home there. Now, I know that uh, you've been talking about on the 20th century for a while now, and, and I get, is, it, is this happening? Is it going to happen? Yeah. I know you did an actual reading last year with Hugh Jackman. Yeah, and it was amazing. Um, what it did was really show me how I do need to do the show. It's a great role. It's a great role. Again, it's stepping into somebody's shoes, but 
I feel confident that that, obviously Madeline Kahn is a huge inspiration to me, one of my favorites of all time. I think I can do that part and put my stamp on it, my own stamp on it, and respect her to her work in it. Um, it'll be the next hiatus I have. So, you know, Roundabout has been amazing on like working at the dates which we are working at now. A lot of that's going to depend on this Sunday night. Uh, GCB. GCB. So I'm hoping for So success. you're telling everyone that if they all watch GCB and make it a big hit, then we're not going to see on the 20th century? No, you'll just see it in the summer. Okay. <laughs> I just got to do that part. Yeah. I got to do it. You got to do it, yeah. got to do it. It's operatic and funny. And how is Hugh Jackman as a leading man? Oh, around? he is so good. He is, you, he's, I know, you know how he is. Yeah. He's everything you want him to be. Yeah. I don't know that he'll be doing the, the lead because he's right. very in demand. And he said to me something so great after the reading. He said, Chris, I don't have to do this part. Like this part isn't like something I feel that I have to do before I right. die, but you do. I thought that was so giving and telling of what kind of man he is. He's like, you got to do this part. Right. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, I can't wait, whether it happens spring or summer or whatever. But it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Yes. And uh, this Sunday, March 4th, GCB is premiering on ABC, and it'll be on every Sunday at 10 o'clock. And it's hilarious. Thank and you're you. adorable. And Thank I love, oh, by the way, I love your dress. Did you knit it? Did you crochet this? Yeah, I did that over the Christmas break. I hope you like it. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Thank you so much. <laughs> Actually, Theory knitted it. The guy, Taskin or Ty, I don't even know how to say it, but I love you, Mr. <laughs> from Theory. Isn't it cute? It's adorable. It's very forgiving. You're adorable as <laughs> always in the shoes. We don't have a Wendy Williams shoe cam, but Prada. The, sh the shoes are pretty amazing. Not them on sale. Thank you for uh, coming in again. You were my first guest, and you're back. And I want you to know that I revere my first guest status. That and my award from Broadway.com so much. It's in my bio. I'm just saying. Of course it is. Star of the year. Come on. I'll take it. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you so much, Kristen. Broadway.com loves you, and it's great to see you, you again. You too. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.